Okay, so this is part two, I guess, a follow-up on the HBO Max situation. Um, yeah, this is really bad. Now, back when I made that first video about the HBO Max deal, I'm like, this is huge. This is fucking great. And now that we have context for everything, and I will be putting um, articles in the description below of what I'm referring to, basically from Deadline and Variety and Hollywood Reporter, various places, I believe Warner Brothers, I think most of us now think of this, Warner Brothers basically lampshaded everyone involved. Now, let's bring some context here. What a Woman 84... And Patty, and Patty Jenkins and Gal Gadot, they were paid their back pay. When you sign a contract with a studio, you have a clause in there that says, you know, you get some you get some residuals. You get some back pay if a movie makes beyond a certain point. It's called a kickback. It's basically you get some extra money if a movie gets more than some other money, you know? Uh, that's what Robert Downey Jr. has been doing with things like Endgame and various other films in the MCU. But I digress. They gave that deal to Patty Jenkins and Gal Gadot before they announced the whole Wonder Woman 84 would be simultaneously in theaters and HBO Max. Everyone was cool with it because they got their residuals, they got their contracts fulfilled, and they just put it in theaters. The difference is here is that everyone else did not get the same deal, and that is where the dickishness really comes in because none of these people involved with the various film projects that are coming out next year were ever consulted. The actors, the writers, the directors, the producers, all these people were not consulted. And this is bad. Bad on many, many levels. You do not want to piss any of these people off because most of these people belong to unions, such as the DGA, which announced that they're going to be probably going for a huge boycott now. So... Let me ask Warner Brothers this. Do you think this is worth it? Because the DGA is, by and large, the biggest union ever. The biggest union. They have negotiated lots of deals in favor of directors. They are very pro-artist. You do not want to fuck with the DGA. And apparently, you know, they didn't give them the same deal. They didn't give the directors, the actors, the producers, the writers any of the same deal that Patty Jenkins and Gal Gadot had with Wonder Woman 84. They basically disregarded that whole shit, right? They basically disregarded it. And the same goes with people from Legendary. None of these people were ever consulted, were ever uh, brought in for negotiation. They were let known an hour to half an hour before they announced that all of 2021 was going to do the simultaneous release. And out of all the people that's bringing up, you know, the biggest calls for change is none other than Christopher Nolan, who, if you recall, was also the very person that brought us into this mess. Because it was his rash decision, his ego, in my opinion, that moved us into this direction. He wanted to have this movie, Tenant, be put into theaters during a pandemic. And because of that, you know, he basically a bombed. And they, ha they had to find out some other way to make some money. So what else would there be? HBO Max. There you go. Now, I do think it's still a bad idea to be putting out movies during a pandemic because you're not going to make as much money. People aren't going to the movie theaters as often because they have to save money in order to live. That's the whole point of living in a pandemic. You have to save money in order to live because you got to pay the rent, you got to pay for food, and most people can't even do that right now. So now we're in this situation, and Warner Brothers had a good idea. They had a very good idea by putting this in simultaneous. If I believe that if they actually worked with these people and actually asked first if they wanted to do that, and actually negotiated, hey, maybe we'll give you your back pay, right? Uh, for Gal Gadot and Patty Jenkins, they got like $10 million because that was part of the deal. They assumed the movie would make a billion dollars and they gave them the back pay. They should just do the same with the other ones. Now, maybe some of these directors and writers, they don't want that. 
and that's fine. They should ask, the Warner Brothers should have asked first. The people at Warner Brothers should have asked. And I do think that it was a bad idea for them to not consult because now they are in huge hot water. Even going as far as other unions saying that they're going to boycott Warner Brothers. Condom former bros, for for example, which is just wildly hilarious and just just fitting. I, I think it's, it just fits. <sighs> oh my god, this whole Warner Brothers thing is just crazy. It is. And while I am a big fan of this whole deal with, with HBO Max, clearly what they have done is overstep their boundaries. They didn't regard anything that like the directors wanted, the writers wanted, anything. You know, they they pretty much voided the contracts with these artists. And what they need to do, in my honest opinion, cancel the whole deal. Cancel the whole deal, bring everyone to the table, and negotiate. If, say, James Gunn does not want to have it on HBO Max, let it not go to HBO Max. Just, you have to... Warner Brothers, I understand you are desperate for money and you want to bring HBO Max's numbers up. You're all, it's already going to be guaranteed with things like, you know, Wonder Woman 84. And I understand that you want to bring those numbers up because you got to make some money off of these movies, right? You have to make some money. However, however, by not actually asking your creators if they're okay with it, you've basically just gave them a non-consent form you basically just said you, you you basically just took advantage of them you assaulted them non-consensually it's not good it's not good for you warner brothers and to be honest this is even much worse of a dick move than what christopher nolan did like yeah christopher nolan did a fuck up with like releasing tenant in the theaters right and bringing in a box office bomb during a pandemic and assuming everyone was going to watch it. But this is equally worse. Because now you're screwing over your artists, you're screwing over your writers, your talent. By not fulfilling the contracts, by not even bringing them into the discussion in the first place. That is a whole ass dick move. That's like... <laughs> that's like me saying... I'm going to host a pizza party, and I try to invite so many people. But then I say, nah, pizza party's not a thing. I keep the pizzas, and I eat them all. They don't get any. Might not be the best an analogy, but it's the best thing I got. Right? So, Warner Brothers, please, take this into consideration. If you ever actually watch this video, what you did was stupid. You did a dumb. Now go sit in the corner. Rethink your life for like five minutes, okay? You, you go sit in the corner, Warner Brothers. Sit in the corner, rethink your life, come back to the table, discuss with the DGA and the various unions, renegotiate all the things with your partner, Legendary Pictures, because obviously they're also pissed off with you. It's just, it's it's maddening. It's bad. This is a bad deal. Like at first I was like, yeah, this is pretty cool, but once you get the context for how this thing was like approved. Yeah, fuck that. Fuck this. I support artists. And this was bad. I should have seen it, but like, this is bad. So, yeah, what are your thoughts on this whole debacle with Warner Brothers? Um, yeah, that's all I gotta say. See you later. Bye.